I did the same kind that everyone else does in Hollywood. And I didn't want to go on the bandwagon. Nell Carter, a name synonymous with raw talent and tumultuous life, rose from the depths of adversity to the heights of stardom. Her journey, marked by moments of brilliance and despair, paints a portrait of a woman who battled against the tides of her time. Today, we will unravel the layers of her life, from her humble beginnings in Alabama to the glow of the Broadway lights and the challenging world of Hollywood. We will explore how her experiences shaped her artistry, her struggles with personal demons, and her untimely demise that left a void in the entertainment world. Nell Carter's life was a study in extremes. She endured personal tragedies and chronic health problems, yet she achieved a level of success that most young singers and actors only dream of. She knew both the pain of addiction and the triumph of successfully kicking her habits. And while she made great money during her award-winning career, she also knew what it was like to lose everything. Born Nell Ruth Hardy on September 13, 1948, in Birmingham, Alabama, Carter was a singer from the beginning. She sang in her church choir and on a local gospel radio show as a child. And she also knew tragedy from the beginning. Her father was Kay when she was just two years old, electrocuted when stepping on a live power line. Young Nell witnessed the accident. That wasn't the end of her early troubles. At 16, she was R at gunpoint. She became pregnant and gave birth to a daughter, Tracy. The teenage Nell felt too young and scared to raise a child, and Tracy was brought up by her Aunt Willie. Willie wasn't the only sibling who was there for Nell during this devastating time. Her brother Bernard was also a voice of support and reason, especially in the face of hurtful comments from their mother. With the help of her siblings, she was able to get past her troubled childhood and stride into the spotlight. At age 19, she moved from Alabama to New York City, changing her last name to Carter and getting her showbiz to start singing in supper clubs. Before long, she broke into stage work with a role in 1970's Soon, which also starred Richard Gere and Barry Bostwick. Carter started getting noticed, leading to bigger and better shows, and finally, her role in Ain't Misbehavin' on Broadway. The role would win her 1978 Tony for Best Performance by a featured actress in a musical. Her big voice and dynamic performances brought her even more fame. She landed a role in the movie Hair, followed by co-starring TV roles in Ryan's Hope and Lobo. And then, in 1981, came her biggest project, the role that screams Nell Carter to most people, Gimme a Break. For six years, Carter played Nell Harper, housekeeper to a widowed police chief and his three teen daughters. As a confidant and mother figure to the girls, Carter got to showcase the many facets of her talent. She was warm and loving, sassy and funny. She could do physical comedy. She could handle storylines featuring social issues like racism and mental illness. And of course, she could sing. In addition to recording the show's theme song, Carter occasionally got a chance to sing within an episode. Gimme a Break was a hit, and Carter received Emmy and Golden Globe nominations. Yet even as she achieved her greatest professional success, her personal life was spiraling out of control. In 1978, singer Carter drew national attention for her role in Ain't Misbehavin', the Broadway show celebrating the 1930s black composer, musician, and comic entertainer Fats Waller, who was responsible for such classic songs as Honeysuckle Rose, I'm Gonna Sit Right Down and Write Myself a Letter, Your Feet's Too Big, and Black and Blue. A New York singer and stage actress for nearly a decade, Carter had always been cast as a belting soprano, but in Ain't Misbehavin', she found a vehicle for her substantial range and versatility, emerging as the star of the production. Her highly acclaimed performance earned her Tony, Obie, and Drama Desk Awards. A subsequent contract with NBC to star in the hit television comedy Gimme a Break further demonstrated her scope as an entertainer. Profiling the Ain't Misbehavin' star in a 1978 article for the New York Times, John S. Wilson wrote that her singing voice 
has the raw, penetrating quality of a steel-tipped drill, and noted that Miss Carter adjusts her vocal style to bring out shadis of wistfulness that other singers miss, wistfulness with an underscore of gutty determination. The writer further pointed out that when Carter can cut Lusa or get into a raucous vaudeville exchange, her voice cuts laser flashes through the auditorium. Deeming the actress the Joshua of the Ain't Misbehavin' cast, a Time reviewer found that her remarkable voice can be as powerful as a trumpet and as plaintive as a flute. And when she sings Mean to Me and It's a Sin to Tell a Lie, she is like a whole orchestra. While her family encouraged her to become a teacher, she felt that show business was the way out. A local celebrity with the singing group Y Teens, she left for New York City at age 19 with $300 in her pocket. In 1982, Carter married George Krenicki. Just 18 months later, he left her because of her recently acquired drug habit. Carter had begun experimenting with cocaine while in the cast of Ain't Misbehavin', and the experimentation became regular use. She estimated that at the height of her addiction, she was spending $1,000 to $2,000 or more a day on drugs. She attempted S and struggled with her faith. It took several trips to rock bottom, each followed by a stint in rehab, before Carter was able to successfully kick her habit. But she did. In the mid-80s, friend Liza Minnelli put her on a plane to rehab clinic Hazelden in Minnesota, where many weeks of therapy finally stuck. Carter remained clean afterward, and she later reflected, Thank God I got help. God and Liza Minnelli. But her personal problems weren't over yet. In 1989, Carter's brother Bernard, her rock in her younger days and still her closest friend as an adult, died of AIDS. Devastated, she left New York, where she had lived since the end of Gimme a Break in 1987 and moved back to Los Angeles. There, she reconciled with Krenicki. The renewed relationship wasn't to last, battered in part by Carter's three miscarriages. Before they split, she adopted two baby boys, Joshua and Daniel. A happy period in Carter's life followed, with her new sons and, soon after, a second marriage to Roger LaRock. Carter was working during this period with guest spots and TV movies to her credit. But once again, the good times wouldn't stick around. Not long after the wedding, Carter's beloved grandmother died. While she was still reeling from that blow, her marriage dissolved, and as she was wrangling with the divorce paperwork and aftermath, she began developing headaches and odd sensory symptoms. A trip to the hospital in agonizing pain led to surgery for two brain aneurysms. Carter came through the surgery and made a full recovery, but that wasn't her only medical problem. She also suffered from type 2 diabetes. She managed her disease with insulin injections and spoke out to encourage others with symptoms of diabetes to get them checked before it was too late. While some critics felt that her considerable talents were wasted in the situation comedy, the performer countered that a black woman in Hollywood has few options. The public knows what it wants, she informed Suzanne Adelson in People, blaming audiences more than the industry for black actors' limited roles. The 1980s were also a time of major change in Carter's personal life. In 1983, she separated from her second husband, Georg Krenicki, whom she wed in May of 1982, and also began a strict diet in order to slim her rotund 4'11 frame. I was very sick, she told Malcolm Boy in People. I had diabetes, ulcers, an enlarged heart, and an irregular heartbeat. Everything that could go wrong with me was wrong with me, and I was incredibly unhappy. Doctors told me I was obese, and I told them it was their imagination. Tension was felt on the set of Gimme a Break when irritability and fatigue began affecting Carter's work. By November of 1983, though, after having dined mostly on roast chicken and pineapple since May, Carter had lost 81 pounds and noted to Boy, I've managed to completely re-educate myself into making eating secondary. I used to eat all the time because the food was there. Now I feel like a kid in school who is gaining points for behaving, and I love myself for it. 
Aside from her role on Gimme a Break, which ran until 1987, Carter has continued performing in musicals, starring in such stage productions as Blues is a Woman. She also reprised her Ain't Misbehavin' role on television and in her concert tours. Favoring theater songs over standard nightclub fare, the vocalist has made just a handful of recordings, guests starring on Ben Bagley's revival albums, which feature the forgotten works of various Broadway composers. Describing the 1981 release Ben Bagley's Everyone Else Revisited in Stereo Review, Paul Kresh related that, The menu includes such mouth-watering desserts as Nell Carter's terrific treatment of Black Diamond and the lovely lullaby, Sleep Baby, Don't Cry. And when the material gets thin, continued the reviewer, Carter keeps it going anyway. In 1988, Carter made a concert appearance with an 11-piece band at New York City's Village Gate, winning praise from Stephen Holden in the New York Times, who labeled her a solid, heartfelt Southern soul singer. Continuing her work on television, she made a guest appearance on the show 227 in 1989 and went on to star in the 1990 CBS sitcom You Take the Kids and the 1992 television film Made for Each Other. I never say no to nothing, the versatile Carter declared in Jet in 1989. If you close the door on something, it'll only swing back and hit you later. The 90s brought several new roles to Carter's career. A two-season stint on Hangin' with Mr. Cooper, a role in the movie The Grass Harp, a turn as Miss Hannigan in Annie on Broadway, guest spots on Reba and other shows. But the decade also brought bankruptcy. Carter first declared in 1995. Another would follow in 2002, around the same time she was putting in guest appearances on Ally McBeal. When young, Carter claimed she originally aspired to become an opera singer, but cited such famous singers as Doris Day, the Andrews Sisters, Johnny Mathis, Cleo Lane, and Barbara Streisand among her influences. When I grew up, performing was not something you aspired to, Carter was quoted as saying by the Washington Post. I was a weirdo to want to be in show business. Most kids wanted to be teachers or nurses. She was a pioneer in many ways, fellow Tony Award winner Audra McDonald told the Chicago Tribune. She had the ability to be such an incredible comedic musical theater actress, blow a song all the way to the back of the wall, and then come down and be so intimate and beautiful in a ballad. Her other stage credits included Hello Dolly, Hair, Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope, Jesus Christ Superstar, and Bubbling Brown Sugar. In 1981, Carter took the role of Miss Nellie Ruth Nell Harper, a smart and sassy housekeeper on the television sitcom Gimme a Break. She portrayed a matronly mother figure to a white California family headed by a widower who was the town police chief. The show ran until 1987 and gave Carter a place in popular culture. She earned two Emmy Award nominations for her role, which revived the archetype of the mammy an African-American woman caring for a white family, Stephen Holden wrote in the New York Times. In February of 1985, an episode of Gimme a Break was broadcast live, which was the first time a sitcom had aired live in almost 30 years. The cast performed the episode flawlessly, and at the end of the show, Carter threw up her arms and yelled, We did it! according to the Washington Post. She also appeared on television in the soap opera Ryan's Hope and on the acclaimed PBS special Barishnikov on Broadway. She returned to TV for regular series roles in You Take the Kids and Hang In with Mr. Cooper. Even though Carter continued to perform through all of her medical problems, she was constantly in poor health. On January 23, 2003, her teenage son found her collapsed in her Beverly Hills home. When paramedics arrived, they declared her dead on the scene. The exact cause of death was not immediately known, but it was assumed to be from natural causes. At the time of her death, she was in rehearsals for a production of Raisin, a musical version of the classic drama Raisin in the Sun. She was survived by an adult daughter, Tracy, and two sons, Joshua and Daniel. Though her career was strong at the time of her death, money issues still plagued with her, and she had just $200 to her name. 
Despite her short stature, Carter was a larger-than-life stage personality who never did things in half measures, Stephen Holden wrote in the New York Times. Along with popular singers Patti LaBelle and Jennifer Holliday, he continued, Carter belonged to a select circle of theatrical pop soul belters whose members reveled in high-powered vocal flamboyance. A typical performance by Ms. Carter reached into the fabric of a song and tore out its seams with feral flourishes. Carter has been described as having a sharp, powerful voice, custom-made for belting, and emotionally honest. Her passion for singing allowed her to connect with both the general public and music professionals. In the Broadway production of Ain't Miss Behaven, she stood out, even surrounded by four other highly talented performers. In addition to the original cast recording of Ain't Miss Behaven, she sang on Ben Bagley's Kurt Weil Revisited, and my favorite Broadway, The Leading Ladies. Carter has been described as having a sharp, powerful voice, custom made for belting, and emotionally honest. Her passion for singing allowed her to connect with both the general public and music professionals. In the Broadway production of Ain't Misbehavin, she stood out, even surrounded by four other highly talented performers. In addition to the original cast recording of Ain't Misbehavin, she sang on Ben Bagley's Kurt Weil Revisited and My Favorite Broadway, The Leading Ladies. Carter was described by acquaintances as honest, outspoken, and a force to be reckoned with. The actress Audra McDonald described her as a pioneer and an amazing musical theater actress whose range allowed her to sing in the most intimate way and to blow a song all the way to the back of the wall. Among the influences Carter named were the singer Dinah Washington and the actress Bette Davis. She also admired the blues musician B.B. King, the actresses Judy Garland and Doris Day, and the singer Johnny Mathis. Nell Carter's short life, she was just 54 when she died, was filled with highs and lows. But it's cheering to note that what we remember her for is not the diseases that plagued her, nor the personal tragedies, money problems, or addictions. It's her work. We remember her Tony-winning turn on Broadway. And, especially, we remember the humor, sass, and heart she brought to her name Saka, Nell Harper. Carter would be happy to know that 10 years after her death, she's defined not by her heartbreaks, but by her successes. Today, the American singer and actress is remembered for her vivacious personality and remarkable talent. Yet her life was marked by a series of personal tragedies and challenges. Her story provides a poignant insight into how personal struggles and societal issues can impact the life of a talented individual. Her struggles with addiction, health issues, personal losses, and professional setbacks are emblematic of the challenges faced by many in the public eye. Her ability to bring joy and entertainment to others, despite her own struggles, is a testament to her strength and talent. Her life serves as a powerful narrative about the complexities of fame, the resilience of the human spirit, and the enduring impact of a talented artist on the world. In a nutshell, Nell Carter's legacy lives on through her work in television, film, and music. She was a role model for many aspiring African-American actresses and singers who broke down barriers in the entertainment industry. Her work in Gimme a Break garnered five Emmy nominations and won two Daytime Emmy Awards for her work on the show. To this day, Carter's works are used to inspire up-and-coming actors and will be so for years to come. And that's it from us today until next time. Thank you for watching.